Okay, this is uh, day seven, which would be marks the first week since I had my surgery, my lymph node surgery. Uh, yesterday, no, yesterday uh, I was in a lot of pain. I didn't post anything. Uh, it was pretty, pretty hectic day. Um, so my nerves are already trying to fire back on, which is good. Um, only a weekend, but it's painful. I didn't even realize how painful this is going to be, but, um, I do, I have been using the painkillers they prescribe me, um, but I am looking into getting alternative methods of, uh, of painkillers, like Kratom and stuff like that. Um, uh, okay, so also, the, uh, there's something called B, well, there's a vitamin called B12, and that ha it helps with nerves. B6 and B12 can help with uh, nerve issues. Um, and mainly you get that in a diet, in a typical diet, it would come from fish, or not fish, chicken, chicken. Um, so the B vitamins are mainly found in meats, but in a vegan diet, it it's harder to get. So that's why a lot of vegetarians or vegans don't last long or might have like, uh, have health issues if they, if they don't pay attention to this one aspect. Um, so the, it helps with uh, maintaining your things like, it, it combats depression, it helps maintain a healthy mind, which is your nerves as well. Like, you know, th there's nerves in like pain or being able to feel, feel your body, but then there's also you know, your nerves, like, your anxiety and stuff like that. But, um, and so, oh, also, because uh, I am doing astrology, I'm studying, like, I'm studying medical astrology while going through this because I recently learned astrology, like, these last two years, and, and now, since going through this, uh, I'm, like, kind of, like, doing a retrospective and also in the present moment kind of thing with how this is aligned with that and and I think that well back in the day it from what I've read uh, back in like in Egypt and all that back long time ago the ancients if you were going to be a practicing medical doctor you had to know astrology um, in India uh, I guess back in the, in the older days in those practices I'm not sure if it's still like that today but uh, you would have to learn astrology um, to really understand a human like the human body and how the energies work how like everything ties into a person in their illness and and all that so you know, here in the in the West in the Western medicine practices they kind of put everybody into just like they just categorize people to instead of really getting to the root issues of a person and, and treating them so they treat symptoms rather than the actual illness itself um and then it's just like cascades into this waterfall of taking all these medicines for all these symptoms when if you really just got to the root of it then perhaps you know you you would just knock it out and not and just heal and actually truly heal yourself instead of living sick because when you're put on medicine and you're gonna have to take that for a long time that's not that's not treating you that's not getting you better that's that's living sick that's not really living but I mean n I'm not trying to talk smack about the doctors and all that. I think doctors are great. I just think that maybe we kind of didn't take, uh, this is a new world, you know? Maybe there's just too much, uh, there's not enough roots um, and stuff that the an our ancestors did or the ancients did that got carried into our new, newer practices. Um, like Eastern medicine seems to work a lot better sometimes but then again there are new diseases that do need um, the newer treatments but 
<sighs> it's it's complicated, but it's all right because it's time for a revolution, and medicine and technology. It's this is where revolutions gonna start. Um, I think the human really understanding themselves and understanding how to heal themselves is it's gonna be part of the whole new world, new revolution, new earth, the awareness. The consciousness of the planet and each person's part in it and what they can do to stay healthy because if a person's healthy then their environment's going to be healthy it's just that's just the way it works <laughs> like a one's environment shows it's a reflection of a person so you know look at our fucking planet oh sorry <laughs> But now look at the state of our planet. Um, the state of our planet is not in a good place, so yeah. It's a reflection that we may be sick as a species. Something needs to be done. Um, well, this is why I'm doing this, so I can show everybody the power that they have, that they hold, to show themselves, even in the grimmest of circumstances, an act of self-love. Like, sometimes they're faced with diseases or, you know, something, uh, your own mortality. So you can really show yourself what you're made of, you know, um, just, you're not a victim, you're powerful. If you ever get faced with disease, it's okay. It's just a way to prove yourself, prove that you can do miraculous things, that you have the power. Okay. Well, I was going to talk about nerves and depression, um, which I touched on. Uh, nerves and depression. So this is B12. Um, since you don't, I mentioned you get it from animals. Well, you can also get it from uh, nutritional yeast. Uh, if you cook with it, it's, I kind of like the way it tastes, a lot of people don't, there's ways to make cheeses out of it, vegan cheeses, uh, you know, like, I think there's this cheddar broccoli bake or whatever that looked delicious and it used nutritional yeast, I mean, it, you use like cashews and, I haven't done this yet, but maybe one day, <laughs> but, uh, for now, cause I do have nutritional yeast and I'll sprinkle it on stuff, but I think I need to... Um, take it up another level because of, of my nerve pain. So I got these capsules too. So um, B12 is water soluble, so it shouldn't cause any damage if I do take a lot of it. But B6, you can't take a lot of that. That will cause nerve damage if you take too much of it. So make sure that you do research that. And since it's week, the first week, I'm going to start. Uh, my supplements again uh, since I've passed it week one uh, so also I'm gonna be taking a lot of D3 because D or vitamin D because that's important for um, skin cancer to have healthy levels of, of vitamin D uh, it's been shown with people who have skin cancers that they normally have low levels um, I'm gonna have to say uh, limited exposure to the sun like is important but not seeing any sun is actually good the worst thing for it so um in fact my my skin cancer came from a tanning bed first of all i know the exactly where it came from um and i used to use those dbb beds i have the purple lights the ones that actually like uh had longer waves of light that penetrated the skin um and well the thing is is that I was healthy and then there was a time when I was going through depression and kind of like not knowing my place in the world um uh like not knowing what I wanted to do with my life and not realizing my potential or my capabilities and not really kind of like growing and flourishing and thriving and so that, and I would stay inside all the time, and this is the time when it actually started manifesting into an actual disease. Uh, like, 
this is when the cancer started growing when it started when there's abnormalities it started changing and then I noticed the times because I lived in Sacramento last year when I was out in the sun it was uh, it, the the mitotic or mitosis rate of the cells development like that which is like the multiplication duplication I mean duplication of the cells was slower when I would go in the sun um, than in the winter time and during that time it was actually from December to May I didn't really go in the sun that often and it, the mitotic rate of the cells development was wow it just got like really aggressive really fast I also did go through a pretty r like an emotional upheaval in a relationship and stuff like that I also have put my job um, as an artist kind of on the back burner I wasn't really pursuing my full potential let's just say that so that has another thing to do with skin skin um, it's ruled by the root chakra, and that's the energy center where it's knowing your place in the world. So, yeah, I'm taking care of that. <laughs> but, alright, also, absorbic acid, this is vitamin C. This is a power kind, the really good stuff. Vitamin C, um, in other countries, I looked at the UK, they have vitamin C treatments, in, or ther vitamin C therapy, uh, and for uh, cancers and it works phenomenal and since I'm going I just did the lymphadectomy taking out my lymph nodes uh, where the cancer was present because it metastasized it should if I do take a lot of the vitamin C I should be able to kickstart my immune system so that it doesn't have the ability to spread into other organs and uh, kind of multiply at a, at a rate that my body can't take care of and that's what cancer is like normally your your lymphatic system is what rids the body of its cancer cells okay it's the it's how your body cleans out its system and normally it can it can clear the body of cancer a lot of people have cancer cells in them they don't even realize it but then if if the immune system is compromised somehow and it's not in in its best working order then that's when the cancer cells will start winning, we'll say, winning this battle. <laughs> but yeah, so immune system, very important. Um, all right, so they got the vitamin C, the D3, and the B12, and these are the ones that I'm starting again first. Um, remember, look up everything, uh, interactions and stuff like that. Uh, what happened yesterday was, uh, it was, alright, so I have started sensing a presence of an infection because I have a lymph drain, um, and, uh, when I would sleep, the lymph fluid got onto my bandages, and, and so, like, something in me intu intuitively told me that that can't be good, because it's waste, it's like your body's waste, you don't want that in inside of something. Um, if you don't want getting that, that getting back into your skin, oops, <laughs> sorry. Um, so, uh, okay, you don't want that getting into your skin or your tissues and stuff like that. Um, so I had a feeling that, uh, I was getting an infection and then yesterday it started turning red, but you know what, the thoughts itself couldn't probably just <laughs> Um, so, uh, then, um, I was in an increasing amount of pain yesterday. Also, I had to refill my prescription, so my levels of my painkillers had dropped for 24 hours, um, because I was spreading it out, and, and just like I knew about the half-lives of painkillers in general, I knew that this probably was a contributing factor to the amount of pain I experienced last night. Well, um, just to be safe, because an infection can actually lead to lymphedema, which I don't want to get. I'm going to do everything I can to not get that, because I have a 50% chance of getting that. Um, if an infection is pressing and isn't treated in time, 
lymphedema will happen. Um, so one of the things. Uh, so, uh, yeah. I had a feeling and so I talked to my doctor. Uh, I actually went to the emergency room because I was in so much pain. And my friends, they're great. But uh, while I was there, um, I didn't want to have to wait around if it wasn't necessary. So my doc I called, paged my doctor. He did talk to me and said he would see me the first thing the next day. Well, he normally had surgeries on Tuesdays. He's not in the office, so I wasn't quite sure. But once I heard that from him, then I went home. Then when I got home, it was actually when it got worse. I laid down, and then uh, for some reason, just being gravity, I don't know what it was, but not being on my feet, and when I just laid there, it was when the nerves started firing like crazy. I was like screaming, my housemates were worried about me, but it's okay. Um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, that was my day. But overall, this week one, it wasn't that bad. Like, I mean, there was a, the first f the first 24 hours was pretty rough. Until I started getting uh, a level pain pillars in me that was, so kept the pain minimal. Um, I do get up and I walk every single day. That's important. Uh, last night, even though I felt like crap, the first thing I did, like, my first treatment for myself was I went to the park. I don't care how shitty I felt. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but it can't there's nothing that's gonna be accomplished by laying around in misery. So I just felt like I just needed to ground and I went and hung some trees and I did feel better after that. But you know, there is other things that ended up coming up but uh yeah. Um anyways, this is a kind of long video but this this is my week one. Uh, and yeah, um, overall, the week was pretty good, I guess. Um, my doctor said when I saw him today, he did write me a prescription. It turns out I was correct because I had warmth around, warmth on my leg that was ab uh, a lot more warm than my other leg, okay? I didn't have a fever, I did check my fever, but I had redness. Um, I also have been nauseous for two days, um, and I've had migraine like a migraine for two days but it could also be because of heat related dehydration but these were a couple symptoms that I just needed to go have checked for myself and it turns out I was correct and my doctor was great because he did hear me he listened to me um he saw me and he did say overall though that my wounds the stitches they look great and eh, I'm doing really good he said that I'm doing very good so yeah well, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching this. And remember, you have all the power to be as healthy as you want to be. Okay.